I want to share quick tips for every single function in the Somnium, what is worth doing every visit, what should you do at your own pace, and which activities can you kind of ignore. First off, you don't have to talk to everyone if you don't want to. Blue speech bubbles means they talk about the main story, otherwise Somnio dialogue is based on locations. For items, I do recommend picking up everything. On the minimap, items are white glowing dots and can be anything from ingredients to metals to pebbles and gems you can gift to people. Gifting raises support with a layer, and without elaborating because of spoilers, a support with a layer does matter. There are almost always pebbles or gems to pick up each visit. All of this advice applies to the after battle explorations as well. It's even more important to pick up items there because you get a lot of metal ore and of course you can go adopt animals. Bonus tip, if you leave without talking to everyone, you still get all the bond fragments regardless. Back to the Somnial, in my room, you can rest up to change the time of day. This shuffles the position of all allies in the Somnial. As you grow your army, not everyone is in the Somnio, so rest up if you don't see someone you want to talk to. You only get one wake up scene per Somnio visit, so if you like seeing those, take a nap each visit. In the cafe, I recommend ordering a meal every visit. The chef has their own specialty dishes designated by the white stars next to the recipe. This gives a better chance at making higher ranked dishes, which also grant even more stat boost than listed. These stats are temporary, only lasting for the next battle, so cook right before you fight. The pink heart tab signifies dishes your two dining partners both like, which I assume equals more support points. You can rest up to change the chef out, but if you don't care about min-maxing, just find a meal your chef is best at for greater bonus stats. If you want to change the music in the Somnial, the music box is on the right. I recommend camping in Psalm. As for the bulletin board, be wary of donating to nations. I think level 2 is reasonable. However, 10,000 gold for level 3 is ridiculous, and it's literally impossible to max donations to every nation. It's kind of a trap that really screws over new players, and even though some S-ranked weapons are actually locked to level 5, it's such a horrible deal to take in a normal playthrough. What you should instead do at the bulletin board is claim your achievements. You do not need to actively complete these, you will just get them done by naturally playing the game. Achievements supply the majority of your bond fragments, so check in at least every so often. Next, in the ring chamber, I recommend starting the game by making 10 to 20 bond rings. Not every unit will get an emblem ring, and that's what bond rings are for. These give stat boosts and let your unit obtain SP, skill points, in battle. There are some better rings for sure, however it's a random gotcha and for casual playthroughs it's not worth worrying about S rank rings. You can spend a lot on bond rings, but just don't go too crazy. When inheriting skills, be sure to go into your inventory and manage skills. You need to equip the skill, even if you inherit with open skill slots. It's very easy to forget this. For polishing rings, these grant a small amount of bond level for the unit and the emblem ring. In the grand scheme of things, it's not a huge deal. This is because, in the arena, the emblem option lets you instantly unlock bond levels with an emblem in exchange for bond fragments. Level 5 is quite cheap to reach skill inheritance, but for level 10 and beyond, it does start to add up. It is kind of affordable as long as you do not waste all your fragments on gotching bond rings. Later on, by doing the parallax for each emblem, you will unlock up to bond level 20, and it makes a huge difference for the unit synced with that emblem. If you want to change your unit emblem ring combinations, use this feature to catch up without battling. Also, to go past level 5 and 10, you need to watch a bond conversation. Later on, you can kind of min-max a little by buying levels if you are, say, on level 4 or 9. That lets you get to the bond conversation, and then you can start the next fight ready to go for more levels. Now, for standard arena matches, you get 3 per visit, and you should use them. They grant EXP no matter if you win or lose, though I'm certain winning grants more. To hedge RNG in your favor, equip a killer weapon and bank on a lucky crit. Arena enemies are random, however, units can build support if they fight each other, so that's another reason to do these as well. In the plaza, purchase at your own pace. You really only need to buy healing staves, master seals, and second seals from the item shop. You do not need to buy a lot of new weapons from the armory because there's no durability in this game, and you will get new weapons off of enemies. You only need extra ones if your main party overlaps weapon types a lot. Otherwise, just borrow weapons from new recruits. They also bring new shiny upgrades sometimes. For the smithy, I would like to do a better guide on this, but my basic advice is that plus 1 or plus 2 is relatively worth grabbing. Engraving lets you augment weapons with stat changes based on each emblem ring. This costs bond fragments, but you can change it at any point. I highly recommend using Marth and Sigurd's engraves early on because they do not have any downsides. Later on, the crit boosting engraves are game changing. These were very impactful in my playthrough, and to offset the might penalties, I refined those weapons for 1 or 2 levels. Last shop here is the Boutique. Everything is relatively affordable and lets you put new outfits on your units, but it's only in the Somnio. Each outfit set applies to men and women, and it's a one-time purchase for everyone. 
Next to the pool is the flea market. This is where you purchase gift items to give to allies. You can buy medals as well for an absurd price. Obviously, all of this is optional, but at certain points, you can also buy new fishing poles, so check back every so often. Speaking of fishing, to be honest, it's kinda time consuming, and the bonus fish only gives like 100 to 200 bond fragments. I think some of the fish are used for cooking, but otherwise, you can kinda skip it if you aren't feeling it. You only need to get so many attempts per visit, so use them if you like, and always fish with Sami. No reason not to, as Sami reduces the fish's HP bar. The Orchid has lots of items, so grab those as you run through. As for the amiibo gazebo, unfortunately I only got an outfit and music voucher for the very first time I used a Fire Emblem amiibo. Every time after that, it was just relay tickets. When you spend the outfit vouchers, do note, you can buy the outfit for Alir and each of the 8 main royals. However, I'm pretty sure unlike the boutique, every individual outfit cost 1 ticket. Kinda dumb, so make your choice carefully. You need more Fire Emblem amiibo for more tickets, so good luck with that. In the training yard, you should do strength training every visit. These grant temporary stats to Alir for the next fight, and yes, they stack with cooking. You can get extra strength, HP, or dexterity based on the activity, and performance does matter. Max is plus 3 to each stat. I recommend doing push-ups for bonus strength, and you won't kill your thumb or finger. As for Ivy's Wyvern Ride, uh, even with decent performances, the best thing I got from this was Elixirs. Also, you can get Vulneraries, Torches, and I think Antitoxins. It's completely skippable in my opinion since the course does not change. If you need items though, go for it, and the last difficulty was pretty cool. For the farmyard, the animals you put out do matter. They drop different items. Without getting too detailed, dogs can drop all metal ores, including silver ore. You need those for high tier refining, and are, they are quite rare, so the 5 dog meta has kind of been going strong. Some animals drop the rare ingredients you can add to dishes, but I'm not too sure how important that is. As for the Brodian Eagle, I think this is the only way to get meat ingredients for cooking. That is kind of useful, unless you guys know another way to get meat items. In a normal playthrough though, generally cooking ingredients are not scarce, hence why everyone is running all dogs. Now, next to the farm is Seedle's fortune telling. As far as I know, this is completely for fun. I have read that the person the participant is thinking about will get extra support points in battle with them, but I did not test this, nor do I think it's worth the hassle. To do fortune telling, it has to be nighttime, so go to sleep in your bed if Seedle is not out there. In the grotto is the most important thing in the Somnium. Feed and pet Sami every visit for 200 bond fragments and raise the heart meter with Sami. When it maxes out, Sami will now follow you in the Somnium. That's it. Last on the docket are the Tower of Trials. There are three modes. Tempest Trials is the only offline mode and grants XP and crystals you need to upgrade emblem weapons. Units do not die in the Tempest Trials and any items or staves used are restored to where they were after it's over. This can be a way to grind levels, but in my completely honest opinion, I did not feel it was worth my time or effort. You need to kill a ridiculous amount of enemies and the XP gained is set at the end so you can't funnel XP into one unit. As for the crystals, you need a good amount to upgrade emblem weapons, and again, in my opinion, you do not need to upgrade these emblem weapons at all to beat normal or hard difficulties. I did not feel it was needed, nor at any point enticed to do more Tempest Trials after doing one. For the online modes, Relay Trials require Relay Tickets, and at the least at the moment, the random matchmaking option is completely broken. Relay Trials is not co-op, in fact, it's a Relay Race, where you take a couple turns, then another player has to continue the battle, repeat again and again. Currently, you need to share your ID code to continue the Relay, and at the end, everyone participating will get rewards. I think this is a much cooler concept than the Tempest Trials, but again, the random matchmaking option is borked, so you need to find and share codes on your own for now. As for the Outram Trials, this is literally Aether Raids without any stakes. You can create your own map and challenge other people's maps for, I believe, gifting items. At least that's all I got so far. I would be slightly careful of entering this mode because I don't think there's a limit to the defense units you can set up, and that can lead to spoilers. I also do not think there is any kind of level scaling, so yeah, not sure how that will work out in the end. That'll be it for my guide to the Somnium. Generally speaking, Every visit, I recommend ordering meals, strength training, and doing the arena matches. Picking up all the items is good, and talk to whoever you want to, but just no dialogue will not change throughout the game unless it's a blue speech bubble. Personally, I did not feel the need to do anything in the Tower of Trials, but go ahead if you want to. The rewards for the grind did not feel appropriate to me. Let me know if you feel different. Thank you for watching, and have fun in Fire Emblem Engage. Good luck in your playthroughs. I will see you in the next video.